Hello, I'm Dr. Maran. I'm a, a GI endosurgeon and a bariatric surgeon. So today I'm just talk about uh, tobacco uh, and its uh, side effects. So everybody knows tobacco definitely is injurious to health. Tobacco in any form, chewing, smoking, or in powder form, anything is definitely uh, uh, injurious to health. Everybody knows about uh, tobacco causing cancer, but most of us may not know uh, the small, small, or even uh, uh, instead of mortality, morbidity arising out of tobacco. So tobacco uh, has uh, 45 known uh, uh, cancer-inducing uh, uh, substances, out of which 19 are very serious one. This is one uh, main thing. Apart from that, tobacco in any form like chewing, smoking or even snuffing as you know, it can stain your skin, it can stain your teeth, uh, uh, it can have a bad odor. Ch uh, tobacco uh, smoking or chewing can dry up your mouth. When a mouth dries up, you can get ulcers, your protective mechanism goes. So unwanted bacteria can grow, can have a bad odor, uh, even leads to ulcer, mouth ulcers. Uh, even caries tooth can arise because uh, the normal flora of the mouth is destroyed. Then uh, the tongue also has been coated with uh, 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 nicotine and other substances. Because of that, major uh, 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 taste buds can be destroyed. Because taste buds are destroyed, uh, you may not have a particular taste, your appetite will come down, your digestion may not be proper and uh, it can lead to uh, loss of weight also then uh, up from there if you go down from mouth to you go down it can affect your voice box or, or the what you call the pharynx so this is the throat level it can give you chronic uh, irritation because of the smoke or because of the juice or because of the uh, 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 unwanted chemicals so these can give you chronic irritation and chronic cough and uh, uh, and when you go a little more down, uh, you uh, you can get ulcers in the stomach, or even uh, ulcers in the foot pipe. You can have acid reflux. Mainly, your digestion becomes a little sluggish. Most of the people have a uh, 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 opinion that smoking increases good digestion. It's not like that. People have uh, certain myths about smoking. They think smoking increases their uh, bowel movements. See the bowel movements, smoking and bowel movements has no uh, direct relationship but it's purely psychological. Plus uh, anything warm, see like if you have a, if you take warm water or hot tea, it increases the bowel movements. The same way when you take, when you smoke, the warm air goes in, it can stimulate your intestine. So probably you may have a, a normal uh, bowel uh, movement. But it has got nothing to do with your regular intestinal movements and uh, bowel movements. Then uh, most of the people think digestion increase, uh, smoking increases, or even chewing increases, tobacco chewing increases the uh, uh, digestion. Again, there is no uh, relationship between uh, smoking and digestion. In fact, your digestion will come down because of the smoking. Most of the people, especially youngsters, when they feel hungry, like especially like 11 o'clock in the morning or even 4 o'clock in the evening, they smoke, they take tea and along with some oily substance like bhaji or vada. So this smoking oil and tea is a very bad combination. Instead of doing good, in fact, it won't fill your stomach, but it suppresses your appetite. You don't have appetite. So you feel that you are not hungry, your stomach is full, it is not so. Actually your stomach is empty. Tea is nothing but tannic acid, coffee is caffeine, they can directly irritate your stomach. Smoke, whenever the heart smoke, you know, the tip of the cigarette has 800 degrees centigrade heat. So the tar or with the chemicals, 800 degree heat, when it goes in, they can directly injure your uh, stomach lining, the protective lining, we, everybody has a good a protective lining in the stomach which can be easily destroyed so you're prone for loss of appetite you're prone for indigestion you're prone for ulcer you're prone for cancer and smoking has also got other uh, side effects it's probably uh, uh, 
uh, also increases the chance of cancer compared to a normal person the cancer to the GIT is increases by four to five times especially uh, uh, oral cancers your uh, uh, tongue cancer even your uh, uh, throat cancer your uh, 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 foot pipe cancer your stomach cancer pancreatic cancer uh, especially uh, bl urinary bladder cancer and kidney cancer in women they are more prone for uh, cervix cancer and uh, uterus cancer and uh, smoking also increases the chance of impotence or erectile dysfunction in young young people longer the duration younger the age of smoking it increases their impotency increases the erectile dysfunction in women equally uh, uh, they can get uh, they, uh, they are prone for miscarriage and uh, apart from these things tobacco also affects the small and medium sized blood vessels when the small and medium sized blood vessels get clogged you can get stroke you can get heart attack and most of the time you uh, you you lose your uh, uh, limbs upper limb or lower limb you have to amputate because of the clogging you can get gangrenes in the upper and lower limbs and you lose your limb suppose you are going for any surgery especially uh, a surgery involving uh, uh, general anesthesia that you are supposed not to smoke because immediately during the surgery or immediately after the post operatively smokers have a high risk of uh, uh, respiratory tract infections which can lead to pneumonia and death so that is why most of the doctors they at least you have to quit smoking you know uh, two weeks prior to surgery especially major surgeries they say minimum minimum two weeks even after the uh, post operative period they will give more chest physio they will ask them to cough more to bring out whatever uh, the phlegm they are more prone for uh, you know respiratory tract infections and smoking also delays your wound healing if a normal person gets healed within seven days if you're a smoker the healing takes uh, uh, 10 to 11 days so uh, suppose you're going for a hernia surgery so hernia is uh, a surgery uh, most of the time you are not supposed to smoke at least two weeks before surgery even after the procedure you are supposed not to smoke for at least three months because the healing depends the suturing healing everything depends upon uh, your nicotine level smoking and ulcer as a special mention because uh, nowadays all the youngsters are all smoking and they have a very stressful life and usually they skip their morning breakfast all these combined together you know they smoke with tea uh, and uh, you know oily substance it usually produces ulcer the ulcer is nothing but most of the people think ulcer is something different see ulcer is nothing but suppose you have a cut in your hand that's called ulcer in the hand same way if you have a cut in the stomach that's called ulcer suppose you smoke and you keep the smoke on this cut wound definitely the wound will not heal the same way if you smoke uh, the uh, smoke when it goes in uh, the wound will not heal the ulcer will not heal so you will have a non-healing ulcer this smoking when it combined with the tea coffee or oil substance or especially with alcohol the chances of uh, uh, getting ulcer is uh, rises to at least 20 to 30 times and they are the one more prone for uh, 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 cancer stomach the ulcer usually people think ulcer means they will have a stomach pain but smokers with ulcer usually they will not have any pain at all they usually they will not have pain at all unless otherwise it's a very uh, uh, serious one usually their presentation is always they will say they have a blotted sensation even with a small amount of food they full they feel full uh, they may not have uh, uh, pain but they will have a discomfort belching they have a reflex kind of thing or even loss of appetite loss of appetite is also a sign of ulcer and ulcer also because of the ulcer uh, 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 you may have a vomiting sensation especially when you brush your teeth in the ma morning time you will have a nausea kind of thing these are the main symptoms uh, people who smoke with ulcer most of the people say quitting tobacco uh, especially smoking is very difficult the reason being most of the time they say doctor I was all right when I was smoking but when I quit smoking now I feel all the problems have started these are usual way of their expression uh, the reasons behind this is when you're smoking as I, as I told you the tip of the cigarette has 800 degrees centigrade 
and it has almost more than 4,000 chemicals out of which 45 are known to cause cancer and 19 are very serious cancer producing substance. When the heat with these chemicals with tar goes into the lungs most of the time uh, you can say 80% goes to the lungs and 20% goes to the stomach. So when it goes to the uh, lung anything any foreign body or anything uh, abnormal goes into our body system usually we have uh, uh, natural filters lung has a natural filter this filter they filter the chemical star and what other substances they go in and the lung also has, the lung has to uh, 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 expand and uh, collapse during the uh, inspiration expiration it has a, a thin film of uh, uh, watery substance, a uh, plural fluid, uh, which keeps, uh, which acts as a uh, absorbent as well as a lubricant. When the toxic substance they go in, they filter the toxic substances and the unwanted substances. Over a period of year, these tar, the chemicals, the unwanted substances, when they go in, they are getting filtered, and they get laid, they get trapped in the uh, uh, fluid. So the fluid, which was very thin, becomes more thicker and thicker. So suddenly, when a person quits smoking, uh, uh, there is no heat is going in, and no substance, uh, no chemicals also goes in. But when there is no heat goes in, this molten liquid becomes more thicker and thicker, makes them uh, difficult to breathe, and they start coughing, cough, sneezing, vomiting. These are all not diseases they're all protective mechanism cough is a protective mechanism anything abnormal goes into the lungs you cough and you bring it out sneezing through nose anything goes abnormal you sneeze it out the same way now there is a thick chocolate like fluid trapped in the lung now the body wants to uh, uh, expel it that is why we are coughing especially after one third day most of the uh, uh, people say one night one first two days I was all right after from third day onwards it's very difficult for them they keep on coughing to bring out the uh, uh, thick chocolate like uh, trapped uh, uh, chemicals and tar when they're smoking whenever they smoke the heat goes in so after three days usually what they do is they again they start smoking when they smoke they feel very comfortable the reason is the 800 degrees centigrade in the tip the heat goes in when the heat goes in the thick chocolate like fluid melts and it becomes more liquid so they can breathe easy so their cough comes down that is why most of the uh, uh, smokers they say I will go and have oxygen they won't say I will go and smoke they say I will go and have some oxygen because they feel easy to breathe their cough comes down so this is something like uh, uh, you know uh, masking the uh, abnormal symptoms it's not they are normal, they are very comfortable or they are very uh, good. It just it masks the uh, uh, you know, abnormal symptoms. So usually that is why after third day they start smoking. It is very difficult to quit smoking only for this reason. They have a cough and they have a breathing difficulty. Since they have a breathing difficulty, their oxygen level goes down, they feel tired. Then they smoke, they feel, they get the refreshness. But it's only a temporary one, which masks the abnormal things. That is why they come back again to smoke. So usually to quit smoke, the smokers who quit smoke are all just like that. They're the one who quit, they are the one who quit smoking. The one who says, after one year, after uh, the new year, I will, redu uh, I will quit smoking. On my uh, child's birthday, I will quit smoking. Or I will have electronic cigarette, then I will quit smoking. I will reduce the number of smoking, then I will quit smoking. They cannot quit smoke. Those who, they say, there is a patch, nicotine patch, I will quit smoking. Chewable, bubble gums are available. Those who try all those things cannot, or I would say 99% of the time, they cannot succeed in smoking. The one who just like that quits, is the one who quits smoking.